All right, my friends, episode 762 is brought to you by Life's Blood Methylene Blue, Sir Thrival's Colostrum, which is 20% off right now, Mitolife's Dissolve It All Systemic Enzymes, and the Relax Far Infrared Sauna. Very cool. Stay tuned to the end. We get to torn knees, trigeminal neuralgia, concussions, digestion, knee replacement surgery, C-section scars, dental surgery scars, burn scars, and gallbladder surgery, and a ton more. Enjoy the show. All right. Welcome, my friends, to episode 762 of Extreme Health Radio. And today we have Dr. Jeff Harris on the show. We're going to be talking about neural therapy injections, uh, the Chinese system of the body, and, and his work. And he works a lot with, I was looking at his bio today, he, he helps people with neck pain, back pain, hip pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, migraines, headaches, and many other types of pain as well. So, um, I've known about Jeff for a lot of a lot of years, probably about ten years now, and I've referred a few people to him who have had great results. And so I wanted to get him on the show because I don't think we've ever done an entire show yet on neural therapy. We've slightly touched on it, but thank you for joining us today, Jeff. Thank you for having me, Justin, and, and I appreciate the the referrals. The people you've sent have been really good, and um, and actually, it's always nice when people get a good result, right? Oh man, right? Makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, it's cool because I, I, I've been aware from your work. Um, I, I think I listened to a radio show that you did like 10 years ago. And um, I've been exploring your work. And I was originally also afterwards introduced to neurotherapy from, I think it was Dr. Harvey Beekelson. Are you familiar with his work? Yes, I'm familiar with Harvey. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he recently passed away, as it turns out. I, I know both of his sons and uh, have worked with them. And they've been traveling the world using their, their microscope and having some really good results, um, you know, with neural therapy and, uh, not using the diagnostics that, well, with their microscope. So, yeah, yeah. I, I referred a, a friend of ours, um, Tanya, and I think she's one of our patron members, um, to, and I think she had some shoulder pain and some hip pain. And when Harvey was on the show, uh, he mentioned about scars and how they can, you know, accumulate toxins and they could block the flow of the body through the Chinese systems and um, lower the voltage and all kinds of different things. And I was thinking, well, I'd never heard of that before, but um, this is something you've obviously been working with people for what, 20, 30 years now? Yeah, 30. 30. Almost wow. exactly 30 right now. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so what's going on with people's scars? Cause it seems like, I mean, everyone has a scar, right. And somewhere I would imagine. And so when someone has a scar, what happens to their body? So in neural therapy, we call it an interference field. So it's a terminology that, um, is really unique to neural therapy and an interference field can be a scar. It can be a, a trauma that happens to the body, say like a concussion, a whiplash, or they have an organ that um, gets injured in, in some way. They may have kidney issues or bladder issues or back issues. And those areas start to send um, the wrong signals um, into the nervous system. What we're looking at in the nervous system is um, we have really kind of a number of parts to the nervous system but the one we're looking at is the autonomic nervous system, which is also kind of the automatic part of the nervous system. So it has two sides. Okay. It has the sympathetic, which is um, fight or flight um, or freeze. And the other side is the parasympathetic, which is rest, relax, digest, heal, regenerate, and sleep. Okay. And so when those are out of balance, um, then we have what we call dysregulation or the body's not regulating correctly through the autonomic nervous system. And then it causes stress in, in the body and the areas don't heal. And so it, and it can be caused by a scar. So for instance, er, everybody has a belly button. So that's, it's actually usually one of our first scars. <laughs> and if we think about our belly button, we kind of get this little eerie feeling about like somebody considering um, doing a treatment there of any kind. Yeah. And even in, <laughs> in acupuncture, they don't, they're not allowed to even, in, you know, put a needle into the belly button, but. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yes. Well, 
probably allowed to, but they're taught not to. There's a few places oh, really? they're taught not to. Now, why, um, why are they not or taught not to? I don't remember th the reason why. Um, hmm, that's interesting. But often when I when I go to examine the belly button, you know, a number of people have belly button hernias, and I want to make sure that I don't puncture that. Oh, but I'll, I'll get okay. go get them to get treated because if it's an open area like that, then the way I think of it is they're losing their uh, electrical energy out of their belly button. And that's the same thing that happens, say, with the scar. Okay. So a scar um, can, it can be in different states. So it can be, um, people have heard of keloid scars where they get big and red. And uh -huh. on people with more um, melanocytes, the, the darker skin, um, they'll actually get darker mm. and darker. They don't turn red there. And they'll, they actually can get bigger and bigger and continue to grow unless they get treated correctly. And in my world, the correct treatment is doing an injection of procaine, which is a local anesthetic, into the scar, and it changes the electrical interference and resets the autonomic nervous system interference that is happening at that site. So let me see if I can understand this correctly. So let's say, like, I have a, I have a scar here on my wrist, my right wrist. You can probably, I don't know yeah. if you can see that or not. So it's below your, was, your thumb. Can you po about, point at it? So we're yeah, sure. it's like right here. Great. And, I see. And it. I, I had a, um, I broke my wrist, you know, when I was 15. I think I had surgery when I was about 20 or so. Uh, and so what's going on when the energetic, I mean. Couldn't someone say, well, I don't need much energetics going to my hand, I guess. I mean, but what, like, what's ha like, what is that scar doing? You know, what's it blocking in my hand? Do you think? Cause my hands feel but, good. <laughs> you're, you're catching me giggle. I mean, so <laughs> it, the, if you knew how much energy goes to your hands, you, you'd be just shocked. I mean, how, how important they are. I mean, if you don't have a hand, think how all the different things you don't even think about that you do with your hand, you can't now do. Interesting, right? Okay. I think just washing your face, how hard that is with just <clears throat> one hand. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't block your ability. You're not going to lose your hand because you have a scar. Uh -huh. So, so that's not something we think of. But it, so where that goes, it, it goes across your pericardium meridian. So it is one thing, but it also goes across the the nerves that all go in, th in through the carpal tunnel. Okay. So. Sometimes people will have them across there, and it'll actually, the, the, the connective tissue from the scar will grow around the, the median nerve there and will start causing carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay. You know, the more the person uses it, the, the worse it will kind of get. And so I can do an injection through there with the procaine and break that up and, and open that space up and reset the nervous system there. And so that now not only does, say, the the energetics work, but the nervous system works and the tendons will work as well. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because when I was, let's see, I was 25. So I had surgery when I was about 20 and around 25, I remember I was traveling and, um, I couldn't use, uh, I couldn't use the mouse in my right hand because I had, uh, I, I couldn't use my wrist. It was just in so much pain. And that's probably what was going on what you just mentioned. And that would be the first place that I would probably treat. And, and it does make sense, you know, it's, it's like, okay, it's right local to the area. But yeah. one of the phenomena in neural therapy is it may not be local to the area. Maybe you, you, um, you stepped on a nail, let's say, and uh, a few months later you started having trouble with your wrist. You know, and I, so I'd probably go and inject the place on your foot, and mm -hmm. then that would release, it, release the, um, the hand. Interesting. So, so you wouldn't even treat the hand in some cases or the actual place where the scar is. Yes, and that's how people end up, say, getting referred to me, is they'll have what I'll call a distant interference field to where their problem is. You know, it's not local. It's not in this. It's not like at the wrist. You know, when they have a carpal tunnel, it'll be on their back of their foot or their head or a tooth even. You know, I, I work a lot with um, dentistry too, and we we'll get to that part too. Yeah, I have a question from one of our uh, Patreon members about dentistry. But um, so what what. What's, what are you injecting into the scars? Is it the same for every person or does it differ? So in neural therapy, we always use a local anesthetic and a local anesthetic um, causes it to be, the area to be numb. The way the local anesthetic makes it numb is by increasing the electro act, electrical activity so that it, that area can no longer send a signal. 
And when the, the body breaks down the, the local anesthetic, the area that's been numb, it now gets updated into the nervous system with the new information. Um, the one that I like, the one that I use is called procaine. Okay. And procaine can be broken down by all the cells and can also be bro broken down in the, in the blood as well as in the liver. All the other anesthetics have to be carried to the liver and have a little bit of, they have more of a, they have a toxicity to them compared to procaine, which is actually, we think of it as um, making people younger, stronger, and healthier. It has like an anti-aging effect that's really kind of cool. So Wow, that's interesting. And so, um, I, yeah, I remember Dr. Beagleson mentioning procaine. I think our, bi our biological dentist uh, uses it as well. So w when you're injecting someone, is procaine and other substances as well? Uh, on a, in the past, we used to use a lot of homeopathic remedies of different types, but the uh, um, FDA or somebody, I don't know who, has gotten them uh, taken off the market, and so we yeah. kind of, so, uh, <laughs> so I use, now I use um, procaine, and I'll use, um, I'll put prayers or energetics um, into the, the syringe, you know, for the person, like to, to see them well, to see them get, get healthy, to bring light radiance um, or relieve pain, you know, I'll kind of mentally program it is the way I, I, I think of it now. That's interesting. So what was the FDA? I know there's a war on homeopathy right now, but what's going on with that, do you think? My opinion, we'll have to say it that way, because I, yeah. you know, there's none of it that's <laughs> printed out there. All right. Um, they saw in um, the year um, 2000 that how many, how much money was being spent on alternative health care. And I think like any industry, they said, well, we want to, um, we want a piece of that pie. Mm -hmm. And so they, they bought supplement companies and, um, seem to have been able to get things taken off the market. You know, there's a number of nutrients that we're losing on a regular basis. There's a number of docs that go on a regular basis to Washington DC to testify about keeping different injectable supplements and oral supplements and they're regularly getting removed without us really having it make it into our um you know news media right you know? right yeah and How'd so you... it's it's a quiet losing of our our rights is the way it seems to me yeah yeah have you noticed a difference with your patient's outcome by not being able to use the homeopathics um no for me it hasn't been so much because i've always been you know energetically aligned is the way I would say it. Mm -hmm. um, but not all, not all neural therapists are. And I'm, I'm, I'm an outlier in that sense. Um, other, other docs that are, are doing it are still mm -hmm. using some homeopathics from different places. Some are, are adding, adding in different things. I, I'm trying to, I was just talking um, with the board. We we're, we're going through what everybody is doing because we're putting on a big conference and, um, next year in, in March um, for, mm -hmm. for doctors all over the world. And we're like, okay, what are we going to talk about? We're talking about combination therapies with neural therapy. Mm -hmm. And because it combines so incredibly well with everything else, you know, all pharmaceutical type things that people may be wanting to do or not do, detoxification pathways, we can help open them up for, for people if they're doing detoxification. It helps to prevent illness, you know, um, by cleaning up the interference fields long before they create illness in a person. Wow. And, um, and then I, I'll use it together with um, the, the medical Qigong, and right. I'll also use it together with um, perineural injection treatment, which is um, a treatment for specifically for um, pain or neuropathic pain um, with um, dextrose, which is D5W. Interesting. Interesting. I was reading a book a while back called, uh, let's see, what was it called? The Ultimate Guide to Methylene Blue by Mark Sloan. Um, and he mentioned near the end of the book about injecting methylene blue um, into people with back pain. And I thought, my goodness, how do you do that? Because I, I have a methylene blue that's a liquid. And so I know it comes in different forms, but I thought, oh my goodness, I had never heard of that before. Had you heard of that? I've heard of it, but it's not something I know how to do. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what kind of <laughs> protocols I might use. Yeah, you know. 
<laughs> it just seems like your the insides of your body would be forever stained if you did that, you know. <laughs> or you get a tattoo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I might expect a tattoo from it, you know. Oh man, but uh -huh. yeah, in the book he claims it really helps, and so I was just wondering if you thought about it as a combination therapy. Yeah, I have a number of people that do methylene blue uh, on their own, and mm -hmm. and then I and I do neural therapy. One of my patients yesterday, his hands were all all stained blue from from using it you know for, for stuff and, he, and he's been liking it having good good results but I, i've kind of stayed kind of simple the the things that i do it, it, it took so long to learn them mm -hmm. that adding other things in um i've, I've added in what i can kind of pull in and i'm actually in the process of you know adding um uh, medical qigong which was actually used in in china up until um the 2000s um, they had hospitals all over and so so wow. that's a that's a big piece that I'm actually having a lot of fun with. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the show so far. I wanted to tell you about sauna therapy. And I don't know if you guys do sauna therapy on a regular basis. I do. I've been doing so for 10 years. And the sauna that I love the most and have been using all this time is the Relax Bar Infrared Sauna. And what I love about the sauna is that, A, it's cost effective. It doesn't cost three, four, five thousand dollars like most other saunas. It's portable, which means if you have a tight space, you can store it underneath your bed. After each use, you can put it in the closet or you can even loan it to a friend. It's very low EMF. It uses is far infrared light though, which helps to increase circulation, increase cardiovascular output, increase heat shock proteins, which has a direct effect on immune cell function. It also helps improving lymphatic drainage and most importantly, sweating out toxins that you're exposed to on a daily basis. This is by far my favorite health piece of equipment I have in my home. I'll put a link to it on today's show page or on our store, biochargeme.com. Wow. Now, Going back to neural therapy, how did um, it start and how did you get your start doing it? Ready for a story? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're welcome to interrupt. Definitely. So the, the way neural therapy got started was there were um, two doctors in, in Germany. Their last name was Hunneke, H-U-N-E-K-E, uh -huh. um, -E, I think is how it's spelled, their name. Uh -huh. And the, actually, they had a sister as well who was also a doctor. And one of the one of the brothers worked on a cruise ship, and so he would mm -hmm. go off on his cruise ship and treat people. And then he he was have to be home in Germany, and the sister came in with a migraine, and said, the, and the brother who owned that clinic said, hey, just go in the back room here, take these products, you know, try it out. This is a new product for migraine, you know. And, and since the sister wasn't going to sue them for being a guinea pig, you know, she. Yeah. So he, he gave her an I, IV of, um, of this product and, and mm -hmm. said it worked. And brother went back to his boat, you know, where he was on the ship. And then the sister went back to where she was. And, that, and the brother that owned that clinic, he, he started ordering a bunch. He says, hey, this isn't working. You know, I'm not getting a result with this, this product. What did you do? And he says, well, go back in the back room where we did it. Maybe the stuff is sitting there. Mm -hmm. And it still was. And the guy had um, given the, the wrong thing to his sister. Oh, there were, interesting. There were, there were two ampules that were sitting there. One of them was for putting it into the muscle, IM, and that had procaine in it. And the other one didn't have that in it, and that was for IV. And he had put mm -hmm. procaine in her vein, which up till that point, people thought would kill them. Okay. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> they thought it might be dangerous because, yeah. you know, because it's electrical activity in the heart and things would, they didn't know how that would go. Right. But it, it cured her migraine. Wow. And so that doc started just uh, started doing injections um, in, in the vein, which we don't do as much as we used to. There's some neural therapists that do a lot, lot of that. And I, I haven't been one. Then um, there was, they were, then they learned that they could do, they had a patient that came in and had shoulder pain and mm -hmm. they knew that they could put little injections over the shoulder um, which we call um, um, segmental therapy in, in neurotherapy. And, and it, it helped her shoulder some, but she never could raise her arm up. It was always, you know, you know stuck. We called it a frozen shoulder. Mm -hmm. And one day she came in and she had a scar on her shin. And oh, her, I, I think it was her left shin she had the scar on and the, pro, and the frozen shoulder was on the right. Okay. And they said, well, I don't know what to do with that, but maybe if we just numb that scar, you know, 
it, it'll it'll help the pain in the shin there. So they injected her her shin and numbed that scar, and immediately her right shoulder was able to move up over her head. Wow. And they said, "How does that happen?" And you know, so that's not any medical books. And so they started to systematically inject all the scars on every person that came in. It's like if you came in, they wouldn't even do an intake. They'd say, "Tell me where all your scars are." And I'm going to, well, over time, we'll inject all, all of these scars, you know, usually about, you know, six, six or more visits. And then they would then ask the person, did all your problems go away? Did you just have anything left? And most people would be fine at that point, you know, or oh, they after would just six need, treatments. Yeah. After six treatments. And sometimes, you know, some people would need, they say, well, I still have this going on. And so they added in, they would do all their scars. Then they do what we call a crown of thorns where you go around the head. Uh-huh. They do the they do the tonsils. Um, they also do what we call the inferior hypogastric, which is um, kind of the, the lower part of the body. Mm-hmm. And um, and they say, okay, now did we get all the things? And usually that and, and some people are able to. That's enough. And they say, well, I want to come back and do this again. And so they would come back like once a year and go through cleaning up their nervous system and, and found that they really felt a lot better and their health improved. Some people would need more treatment because the, the areas are more devitalized is the way I would say, or their body was more devitalized. Uh-huh. And, um, and so they kind of develop that type of system. The way that I, I got into it, I was, um, I met a, um, author. I was at a, a clinic down in Oregon. I was learning, um, ozone therapy from Dr. Terska. I don't uh-huh. know if you've ever heard of him. I have he would, not. No. He was an old-time um, naturopath um, that had a, a practice. He, he went to kind of retire in Mist, Oregon, and his practice built up really big. And so he invited me to, to come down and help him. So I'd come down on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. I would drive down to Oregon and help him. And I, would, I, would, I, did, I ran his IV clinic, and I did most of the ozone injections. And he did some things called needle surgery where he taught me how to treat um, hernias. Um, and so that was kind of an extra little piece that I got from him as well. And um, I, I would drive down. It would be late at night, and I would you know, go to my room in the trailer there. And I, I, I threw my, um, my bag on the, the bed in the dark. I didn't even have to turn the light on. I knew where I was. And, and it, I heard this, oh! and, and I was like, oh, there's a woman in my bed. And, <laughs> and she, she was in her late 80s, you know. And, and yeah. I, I and I said I said I said oh pardon me I says I, I'm Dr. Harris I'm coming in for tomorrow and she told me her name and I says oh you're the author and she says yes and so we talked a little bit and um and then and I greeted her for the next couple of days down there and then she said hey um, I'm going to be seeing this doctor in Seattle um, named Dietrich Klinghart who does this thing called neural therapy why don't you come to my visit so I went to that I went to the visit. And when he was doing an injection to her appendix scar, I said, wow, that looks pretty easy. He says, yeah, you should come to my workshop. And I said, cool. So I went to, you know, signed up for his workshop. And um, he and Louisa Williams were putting on a, it was called neural kinesiology. And there's like 70 docs in the room. And I got there late. I usually get there early so I can sit up front. And um, so I was sitting in the back. And um, whenever they were doing injections, I would like walk up to the front so I could see. You know, and I started handing, you know, started loading syringes for him and handing about everybody thought I was part of the, the workshop as it turned yeah. out. <laughs> and at the end of that workshop, I had um, a patient that had had diarrhea for um, for two weeks. He was losing 15 pounds a week and it was, was quite severe. Wow. Um, he was HIV positive. So this was in the early 90s before we had antiretrovirals that people have okay. been on. Right. And um, he had been to multiple emergency rooms, seen multiple doctors for it. And um, I put him ahead of my other patients. I, I saw him early in the morning on Monday. And I did the neurokinesiology, which is a style of muscle <laughs> testing. And mm-hmm. I couldn't find anything wrong with his gut. And I, and I couldn't find anything wrong with any of his scars. And I was like, okay. I said, well, teeth are an important feature they were talking about. And I had him open his mouth and I started testing each tooth and there was one tooth in this his lower left front that um, that was testing. And I said, Hey, 
I says, you know, I need to inject at this tooth. I says, what did you have done here? He says, well, I had a root canal that got started being put in that didn't get finished. And it was a two days later is when I got this diarrhea. Oh, and I says, my well, gosh. I guess, and I says, well, that gives me a lot more confidence because in neural therapy, that's wherever an injury happens to the body and a symptom starts, you know, really soon after that, especially in, within the next six months, that usually we can inject that place and get the problem to go away, which is really kind of cool. Wow. So I, in, I injected in the gum mm -hmm. and he screamed out loud. And I was like, I thought I'd, you know, I'd only been practicing like four months. I was, oh man, you know, You're like I touched a nerve, you know? <laughs> I, well, I, I thought it, I thought he was going to sue me. Yeah, that was my yeah. first thought. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> And, I, and, I, yeah. and so I told him, he said, he says, what did you inject? And I told him about it. He says, no, he says, no why did all my pain just go away? Wow. I says, it did. I says, that means that, you know, this tooth needs to be treated by a holistic dentist. I says, he'll, he'll probably want to remove it and then clean up the infection down in there. And, um, and his, his gut pain was gone for two days. And then he called me up and says, it's back. And I says, I says, I'm not going to be able to get it permanently because it's a tooth but you got to call the dentist and i can help get you in if he has any any problems you know with the schedule or anything and so i got in and so, went in saw him on a friday got the tooth removed as what the dentist did and cleaned up the infection and then he called me on um like the next monday and said oh it's back and it's worse came in and saw me and um i put some lugol solution which is an iodine solution and i put it down in the socket there and all the pain went away and I came home with the bottle, and he did that every, you know, two or three times a day for a couple of weeks, and he never had the diarrhea again. That's amazing. So most people would hear that. I mean, for me, you know, this is episode 762, and I've been doing this kind of work since 2002. So for me and my audience, this is like, you know, makes total sense. But for the average person, they're thinking, how does a tooth affect digestion? So how does it? Or, or, or affect <laughs> the, the bowels and diarrhea, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. How does that work? So, so there, there's some people have tried to, nobody knows the perfect answer. I'll, I'll start with that. Mm -hmm. But we do know that there, the teeth do have a relationship to the organs in the body. Um, I, there was a Dr. Vol in, I'm pretty sure it was Germany. Some people have said that it was in um, Switzerland, and I, so I don't have the perfect answer, but I'm, I'm get, my, my thought is Germany. Mm -hmm. and he has a, a chart um, that you can actually look up on the internet. Um, I just call it EAV tooth chart because it's electroacupuncture by ball tooth chart. And there it shows the acupuncture meridians and it shows the organ relationships um, to the teeth. That it's actually still in, in use. It's actually been quite accurate at being able to, like, the, the front teeth. Are you looking it up? I see your, your yeah, screen I'm looking flash. At, yeah, I'm flash looking it up. Bit. I'm trying so, to find, you, yeah, I'm trying to find it right now. This is interesting. Okay. Cool. And just EAV tooth chart, and then you probably hit images and you'll get a bunch of choices. Yeah, let me see. Ah, there we go. Let me, I wonder if I could bring one of these up onto the screen. That would be okay. cool. Because then see. I could actually Let's see if it'll see. pop up there for you. Um, <laughs> wow, this is kind of, ah, uh, there we go. Okay. So let's see if I can do this here. Let me do share screen. Uh, share sound. Okay. Okay. Does that work? Can you see that? I can see it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Is it possible to bigger it? Yeah. Does that look a little bit bigger? That does. I'll have to. I'm going to get in close on it. Oh, sorry. Bigger. Oh, got a lot a little smaller yet. Okay. Um, I can barely right? read it. It's, it's a pretty one. It's really a pretty one. Yeah. So it the says place here. That I, can, I can see oh. above there um, a little better. You can see the organs, how uh -huh. they're represented. And if you look in the very center, you can see kind of the representation of a bladder. Right. And on, either, on either side of it, you have the kidneys and then the, the uh -huh. liver, lungs, <clears throat> large intestine. So you can see where the large intestine is. And it was one of the, it was one of the lower teeth related to the large intestine. Oh, wow. Okay. Look at that. Um, I did have a, um, a patient that, that had a root canal and a, and a front tooth. And so you can okay. see the front teeth were related to the bladder. Okay. But it's also related to the prostate and, you know, say the, the whole pelvic region. 
that um, I could do an injection to the, the gum above the tooth, and then he was able to um, have erections for a week. You know, now, oh, they wouldn't last, <laughs> now, they wouldn't last for a week, but he, could, yeah. he was able to get them at will for that amount of time. Okay, okay. It wasn't like a Viagra mishap or something. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It wasn't a pride prism, which is yeah. a term for that. It didn't cause a problem. It actually made it so he was functional. Well, wow, that's amazing. Totally. So now I've heard too from Chinese medicine and this type of work that it's possible for someone to have like an issue, say with their liver, and that could reflex to a tooth as the source being the liver, or you could have a tooth going on and then that could reflex to the liver and it goes both ways. Is that right? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree. I find that pretty regularly. Yeah, because I wonder if like, um, you know how you see in boxing matches, or I'm just trying to think if someone gets an injury to the liver or like in a UFC fight where someone might sustain a kick to the liver or something like that, um, that could be a direct cause of some dental issues, you know, maybe six months later or something. That can. And also it, it can be, so, so if they had that direct kick to the liver and damage it, I would do segmental therapy over the liver, you know, little injections on the surface of the skin with procaine. And then I take, a, I, I might inject by the tooth that's related to it, you know, if it tests, but more likely I'll actually use um, a green laser pointer. A green laser, teeth. okay. Um, you can use red or green, and, and I just happen to have all green ones. They're, they're a little brighter for um, when I'm giving um, talks. You can actually see the laser easier okay. when it's green than when it's, when it's red. But both will, will work. And um, actually, I think... Uh, probably about once a week, I'll go through all of my teeth with a, a with a laser pointer, uh, and just to to take because I know it treats all the organs in the body, but it also um, helps with healing the teeth. It's really kind of cool when you do it that that when you put the laser on the tooth, it actually lights up. The term is fluoresce, but it, it'll 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 it, you're like wow, you wouldn't think that, but all your bones will conduct light. Right. Right which is really kind of cool. Wow. That's so interesting. And so, um, it says on your, on your site that you treat back pain and nerve pain and knee pain and joint pain and basically scars and, and joints as well as, um, as well as just, you know, things like scars, right? Yes. So, and I, my site is more geared towards pain because it's kind of an easier one, um, mm -hmm. in a way just to, to write about, to talk about interference fields. I do have a little bit of that on the page that has neural therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and neural therapy, I think of it as, you know, as a pain treatment, but I also more think of it as an interference field treatment. Okay. If that makes sense. My, my main pain treatment is really the PIT. That's what I'm going to start with. Cause if it works, it's just like, it, it just stair steps a person out of pain and wow. which, which is really super cool so typically if someone comes in for just a scar that they think is not really causing any issues but they just have a scar from some cut or wound or something uh, would that be a series of six treatments like you mentioned or does it vary uh, depending on the person Hey, have you guys tried Sir Thrival's colostrum yet? If you haven't, you totally should. I love this stuff. What I love about it, it has lactoferrin in it, which is a really powerful iron chelator. It also has retinoic acid, which is real vitamin A, which helps load copper into ceruloplasmin. It helps to seal your gut lining, improving digestion. It contains all essential fats, sugars, and amino acids. It's non-GMO, organic, grass-fed, and it also has transfer factor and immunoglobulins in it, so it modulates your immune system. Great for gut health. There's four flavors, the original vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. I like the original myself. I add it to my smoothies, coffee, ice cream, pancakes, shakes. The kids love it. It's amazing stuff. Check it out on biochargemeat.com. So like, a, so the first um, testing thing I did was the neurokinesiology. And now we do a thing called autonomic response testing. We can, we shorten it down and call it ART. Okay. Uh, and so the ART is kind of the guide, one of the guiding um, testing ways to actually find out where the interference fields are and to actually test the scar to find out if it's actually causing a problem. And also to test it if, to find out where it is in the um, level of priorities for your, your nervous system, let's say, too. Okay. And so I usually treat from a, in a, in a hierarchy of priorities, is, you know, 
So because it's like cracking a safe in a way. It's like you have to go to one number, and sometimes you have to go to that number a couple times, and then you turn it the other way and you go to that number a couple times. So sometimes I'll have to treat a scar more than once to get it to clear. Is way I, way I think of it. So it's no longer causing um, you know interference or dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system. What do you think? I remember years ago, before he passed away, I was listening to Dr. Bob Marshall um, from Healthline, and he had a radio show in Texas for many, many years, and they would syndicate that. And so I would listen to him here in California, and he would often talk about um, scars and how they, you know, exactly what you're talking about. And he mentioned like mud packs and doing things topically like that. And he has a, a product, I think it's called Medibody Pack from Quantum Nutrition Labs. And I've never played around with it, but um, people say they have success with that. Is that something that you do as an adjunct to your therapy? It's not been something that I've worked with. Um, I've had the failures of that, and they may have had the failures of, you know, neural therapy even, you know, mm -hmm. go that way. Um, and we always make a, everybody makes a deal out of it. Oh, that one doesn't work. And mine worked better. But yeah. as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> all therapies have failures to it. And it's very humbling to be a doctor, honestly, in that uh, sense, because yeah. Not everything works all the time for everybody, you know, be yeah. nice. Um, I do know some people that have, that do it, but most of them don't do any of the ART to actually test against it. And I don't remember if Marshall was using something to test against it or, or not. Yeah, he used something called quantum reflex analysis and he called it QRA. So it may have, I've never had it done, but it may involve testing, but. Uh, it, it probably involves some, some sort of muscle testing, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And muscle testing is actually, you know, one of the ideal ways to check for interference field because I've, I've worked with um, some professional football players that, you know, I, I, I reach oh, up man. and I go to pull, pull their arm down and, and their arm is, is as big as my leg, you know, yeah. <laughs> just, they're so huge. Yeah. They're just huge, huge humans, you know, yeah. and, and I pull on the arm and then I, 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 I touch a scar and all of a sudden their arm goes down and they look at me and says, you can't do that. You're too skinny. <laughs> well, that, and I says, Hey, watch this. And, you know, their wife's in the room and I, and yeah. I said, have your wife pull on it. And then, and then I'll touch the scar and, and the wife can pull the arm down. He says, honey, that's real. That's causing you a problem. And I would tell them, I says, if you're out on the football field and some guy hits that, you know, punches it or you roll on it, whatever, you know, gets hit mm -hmm. hard enough, that's going to make you weak for a period of time on the field. And they says, Treat it, doc. You know, yeah. They're kind just, of straightforward. Just fix it. Yeah. Just, just fix, fix it. it. <laughs> fix it now. You That's know. funny. Yeah, you it's know. interesting because there's a lot of things I've heard of over the years, like um, like the clay and other, you know, cl you know, mud packs and castor oil. Do you think these things are things that someone could do um, while they're waiting to see someone like you? Or do you think they're beneficial at all? I, I think they are. I think they're yeah. worthwhile. Yeah, castor oil, we've used... Um, I think it was, I think it's vitamin E we've actually rubbed on as well. Interesting. Um, actually, wheat germ oil is actually what we've used, not, oh, not yeah. vitamin E. Wheat germ oil has been one that, you know, rub, people have rubbed on scars. Um, we used to be able, we used to do a rub on of um, DMPS and, um, which is a heavy metal chelator and um, procaine for, for some people, you know, that couldn't tolerate injection, but we can't get DMPS anymore. And so sometimes we'll just, yeah. we've tried just topical. Because there are some people that can't handle certain things for different reasons, we know. Right. Sometimes children, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems but, like, um, so scars, like you could treat it with neural therapy or castor oil packs or mud packs, things like that. Um, and the physicalness of the scar isn't going to go away, but the symptoms related to it will, right? That's what, that's what we're looking for. So yeah. castor oil does, is a smooth muscle relaxer. Procaine also has um, is, has some smooth muscle relaxing effects and creates a um, increased circulation. Okay. And we know that the castor oil has the effect of if you do a castor oil pack or you know or and wrap it with um, saran wrap, you know, mm -hmm. say over your liver, it opens up the circulation and helps with the detoxification of the liver. You can put it around your ankle if it's swollen or, or other types of things like that. So. It, it's a, absolutely a home remedy to, to try. It's castor oil. If you've used it before, it's really sticky and messy. Yeah, yeah so it's it, pretty gross. It, there's a little bit of a skill. To, yeah, totally. <laughs> to, to work with, to work with That's it. But I, 
but I've used it. Yeah. Yeah. I use it quite often and it's, uh, it's really good. And, and we've done an entire show on, on the benefits of it and stuff, but, um, it's interesting because it's my understanding that like scars, I mean, you, you'll know this, is it true that they sort of accumulate because the low voltage state in the area, they'll accumulate parasites and heavy metals and that kind of thing in the scar. And that's why they create that disturbance. So they'll, they'll create a disturbance, um, on their own mm -hmm. without that. Okay. And where the disturbance is, is where toxins will, um, will flow to, let's say in, in the body, any kind of metabolic toxins, you know, <clears throat> heavy metals, you know, and external, you know, what do we call it? Um, things that people use from their makeup, use from cleaning products. All, and the same thing happens in any place in the body that has a low level of circulation or has an altered circulation. I've known of women who got breast cancers in places where they actually hit, accidentally hit their breast with a broom, you know, and they and the, and it and it caused a trauma. Had I done a, a neural therapy treatment on that they, earlier, it probably wouldn't have got a cancer there. Mm -hmm. But if we think about like the the lower abdominal organs, you know, that's a place that there's not a lot that's going on there unless a woman is pregnant. There's not a lot of circulation happening there all the time. So it closes down the circulation. So it's a place that builds up the, the toxins and things that just, you know, we get on a daily basis unless somebody's fasting and cleansing, you know, in some way. It's interesting. So I, I heard you mention once that, um, that the voltage... I think is, I guess, been considered to be like negative 90 millivolts for the yes. cell. I've heard, I've heard of negative 70. Yes. Um, but when you have a scar, that's definitely altering that, but that's bringing that up, isn't it? It, it, it either brings it up or down. Oh, really? Yes. It, it can either be, so a keloided type of scar would be, you know, maybe a, you know, a thousand millivolts. Okay. So the body at that point is sending a huge amount of its energy to heal that area that has been healed maybe many years ago. So it acts like an energy leak in that way is the way I think of it. It's like, and they go afterwards, they go, Hey, I have more energy. It says, yeah, because your body's not trying to heal something that's been healed a long time ago. Or if it goes too low, that also acts as an energy leak. It acts just like a plain hole, you know, like a hernia might, you know, just it leaks out of the body. Is that sort of what Dr. Jerry Tennant talks about, where he talks about healing his voltage and, you know, maybe the neural therapy is restoring the voltage in that area? Neural therapy, neural therapy when you do the injection, it takes it to 290 millivolts. Um, so it, it's, mm. you know, higher, of course, but it seems to be a physiologic charging level for the cells is what is kind of what we're, what we've made up. I, there's not something that we ha know that that's, perfectly true. I, I don't have scientific data on it. I'll say it that yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the cells have a chance to, the, the, the cells there have a chance to come back to normal. And also it seems to send the information to the mm -hmm. deeper areas of the body, the, the ganglion that control the area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to do injections to the ganglia to um, get that scar to actually heal, which is, you know, some of the more advanced neural therapy type of things. Have you guys heard about systemic enzyme therapy or proteolytic enzymes? This is my secret weapon for battling inflammation. And we had a guest a long time ago, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, who was using high dose proteolytic enzymes on late stage pancreatic cancer patients with great success. Serapeptase is derived from the same bacteria that the Japanese silkworm uses to dissolve its own cocoon. And these are from Mitolife, enteric coated serapeptase and natokinase. The main method of action is to dissolve necrotic debris in the blood that shouldn't be there. Sort of like Pac-Man going all throughout your blood and eating things up like scar tissue, fibrin, fibrosis, calcification, fibrinogen. And this takes a massive burden off your liver and your white blood cells. It can be used with anything that's inflammatory to lower inflammation, anything that ends in an itis or osis. You can even use it topically with DMSO. I've done that before with great success. This stuff is amazing. It's called Dissolve It All and you can find it on biochargeme.com under the MitoLife section. And our code EHR15 will get you a 15% discount. Percent discount. Wow. So the more advanced is treating areas, not necessarily the scars, treating the scar plus other areas. Yes. And we, that are, you know, deeper that are actually related to the nervous system.
Are there any differences between scars like a like a keloid scar? I mean, I know there is, but like like an acne scar versus a keloid scar versus, you know, what's the difference there? So the, the difference is, is when I test whether it actually is creating an interference or not. Okay. Because I've treated, you know, full back acne scars, you know, neck acne scars, you know, <laughs> you know, it just, uh, it just uh, depends on, it's like, how did the body handle it at the time? I mean, somebody who had, you know, as a kid, acne, they may have had um, other mm -hmm. stresses, obviously, you know, as they're going through their teen years mm -hmm. and, um, and they, and their immune system was, dep you know, suppressed during that, that time. And they were getting other kinds of illnesses often at that, that time, or they weren't able to function well in sports. They didn't, they had brain fatigue or fog, you know, weren't able to study very well. And um, those acne scars end up being more likely to be a problem than ones where they stayed healthy through, through all those years. And it was just a hormonal issue. Interesting. Does, does that make sense? It's, it's yeah, how it devitalized the body is that act, at the time that actually is a piece of the interference field as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's wild. And so if someone were like, is this a therapy that someone could do as a preventative or as a maintenance to kind of do once a year type of thing, or only if someone's having pain? Um, I actually think of it more as a um, preventative maintenance and treatment. So for pain or any, any other kind of conditions, like the guy had the, the diarrhea that nobody else could get better. Uh -huh. I think of it as, um, if somebody came, come, I have some that come in on a semi-regular basis, you know, and I'll, I'll test and find out where their interferences are in their body and treat those and, and keep them healthy. I've, you know, I have a number of them I've kept healthy for, you know, close to 30 years now. There's like their lives, everything just works. It's like you catch, they say you catch everything way before any problems happen, Yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, with, with the testing. And so that's really nice to have. Um, but most people don't come in until they've got some issue, you know, that, some that problem, they'll yeah. have. The pain, and so I'll, I'll use the neural therapy to to treat the pain, and then and I'll and then I'll give them the lecture of, hey, this this area is sort is devitalized. Probably good to see me in six months to a year and have me retest you. Um, and there's other things that I can do if you're wanting to maximize your your health. What are the difference between uh, neural therapy? I mean, I know the difference, but um, I, I guess it depends on either what the patient wants or what their problems are. But I know you do. Um, ozone injections called prolozone too, right? Yes. Um, so how do they differ and, and what do you give a patient? So my, I start out, it depends on if they come in and they have pain, I start out usually with um, the PIT or the dextrose injection okay. um, to the cutaneous nerves because if that works, it ends up being magic. Um, okay. Ozone injections, I, I actually, the last couple of years, I haven't been doing as much, but I did them for, you know, 28 years all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, different people, they have a different, they work differently. And I, I like the, the ozone for places that I think may have some infectious properties okay. or I need to have the additional um, oxygen in the area is the way I think of it, mm -hmm. you know. And so the muscle testing would, or the ART would give me the, the choice of what to use in, in the area. And I really like the ozone. I mean, it's it's probably one of the the most important health remedies. I mean, whole countries actually use it to to save on their medical care stuff. I yeah. actually have known known doctors um, from Cuba that you know they were probably some of the best experts in ozone therapy I'd, that I've ever seen. You know, they just knew how to yeah. use it so well. Yeah, and know? they have that whole Cuba protocol that you can follow. You know, and. Um, it's amazing. I was listening to Dr. Robert Rowan and he was talking about, now I don't know how he was doing this, but he was working with patients with macular degeneration and he was using ozone injections uh, mm -hmm. for that. And he, it wasn't IV. So it was some sort of like local injection. I have no idea how that works, but he was saying there's been a lot of success with him in that. Well, I haven't, so I haven't seen how his, his protocol for doing that. So I don't know how he's doing that. <laughs> That's crazy. I couldn't imagine getting a, well, I guess people do get shots in their eyes, right. For different, like uh, vision issues, don't they? Probably not. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping he's not doing it. It's probably the only place on the body I haven't injected is his <laughs> eyeball proper. You know, I'm not going there. That's funny. I remember years ago I tore my, uh, I tore my ACL doing jujitsu. Uh, this was 2008 and my options were, I think it was like an 85% te tear in my ACL. 
And um, my options were surgery. And then I started looking into that, thinking to myself, there is no way, like this is way more complicated than I thought it was because it involves getting a cadaver tendon, attaching it to the bone with a, a piece of metal or using your own tendon, which would require two different incisions in the body, which would create another scar. And then the metal would attract EMF. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to do all that. So I ended up getting a, a prolozone and it worked remarkably well. It didn't, I, I have to say, it didn't heal it a hundred percent to the extent where I could just take off on a fast sprint, but it got me about 95% there with just mm -hmm. a series, I think, of six injections over the course of like 12 weeks, I think. It's amazing. I was thinking it would probably be more than one. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yep. So like the claim at the time was, you know, your, your tendon or ligament can't regenerate, you know, that, you know, once it's torn, it's torn. But do you, have you seen a difference in that? So I, I more commonly for, you know, joint issues that are, you know, like that, especially if they're loose ligaments, I'll go to um, prolotherapy. Okay. Um, it's, instead of prolozone, um, just my, you know, what I learned and what I, my go-to has been, cause I, I know I can in, inject the ligaments and o ozone and, um, prolotherapy solutions will create an irritation uh, uh -huh. and yeah. the prolotherapy solutions will create a bigger irritation. Yeah. And which is what I'm, I'm used to and I'm used to helping people, patients go through. Yeah. Now ozone can cause a big irritation, but it's not as often, you know, but the, I, I'll inject all the ligaments. And so what I would do with um, o, the ozone therapy, if I was going to use prolozone for um, ligaments, I'd actually in, inject all the ligament attachment sites the same way I would inject um, prolotherapy. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wow. That's a unique approach. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Now, before we, we have about nine or 10 messages from our, our Patreon subscribers that we'll get to in just a second, but for the last little bit here, I want to ask you about emotional scars because scars can be physical or emotional. And um, does neural therapy play a role into that or is that a different modality of work that you do? Yes. Um, emotions end up being electrical phenomena. Mm -hmm. So somebody can have anger, you know, rage that they've um, suppressed or, you know, you may not think they have it suppressed, but they, the, the little peep that they're allowing out is a large yeah. amount, maybe. They're the rageaholic, but they still yeah. they still don't get it all out. Yeah. Um, so I'll do injections over the liver to, to help cool that down. And then the, and for me in medical Qigong, we actually dig in and we actually will pull out the, the um, emotions, which is really kind of a, a cool phenomenon. We, we should do a, a, a whole segment on that. On the I would love Qigong. that. Let's do that. It's interesting because you, you figure like the blockages that are happening, sometimes, you know, you can't see them, but you feel the effects of their symptoms. And, you know, someone with anger issues, you know, might complain of liver issues or poor digestion or something like that. And so I could see how that would be, you know, an anger would be really causative of something happening, happening to the liver, you know? Yes. Anger. I mean, fear is cause it relates to the kidneys. And so, and anxiety will be relating to the heart. Worry relates to the spleen. And the lungs um, is grief. So people with a lot okay. of lung issues, it's, you know, suppressed grief. Mm -hmm. And um, some, like breast cancer um, in Chinese medicine, the way that one of the ways that it forms is um, suppressed anger and grief mixing and actually creating the, the cancer. It's, there's a it's, there's a lot more to it, but there's like a heat rising aspect that goes into the, the breast, but it's only going to happen in a breast that would have, um, you know, some trauma mm -hmm. that's already there, some circulatory issues. If, they, if the person's been getting neurotherapy and those have been found, that there's not going to be a place for the, the cancer to really be able to form as well. You know, but. Gosh, it's so fascinating. There was a guest we had on the show. I don't know if you're familiar with him, Dr. Bob Dowling. And he, he had a, like a van that he would drive around the U S and it was called cancer is curable or something like that. He had big letters on the side of it. And he was treating patients. I think he got forced out of the U S and he was treating patients in, I believe it was, it was Ecuador, but he would do, um, x-rays on these women 
And he would show like a, an actual line in the x-ray from a tooth, like a root canal that's been rotting. So methylene blue is quickly becoming one of my favorite tools to use my overall health strategy and immune system strengthening. It's an amazing substance. It was first put together in 1876 by German scientist and chemist named Hendrik Caro. Later, it was used in the treatment of malaria by Paul Gutman and Paul Ehrlich in 1891. Uh, but then later it was synthesized into a popular drug that we can't talk about today, starting an I and ending an N. So what I love about it though, is that it is an electron donor, electron acceptor, and an electron recycler. It helps to change the conformation of hemoglobin in the red blood cells. So the hemoglobin can carry more oxygen to every single tissue in your body. And it also helps to clean up senescent cells. It increases mitochondrial biogenesis increasing ATP production. It works as a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, increasing dopamine and serotonin. It's a nootropic, it's antimicrobial, it's an antidepressant, it's antioxidant, and therefore it's neuroprotective. And I like the company Lifeblood because it is a liquid tincture. And I usually use a small amount, like one or two drops per day. But then if I have some health challenge going on, like a cold or flu, I might do 20 to 30 drops in one ounce water three times a day. So I'll go heavy on the methylene blue, but what I also like is you can nebulize it too and get it into your lung tissue, or you could use it topically on your skin, although it will stain your skin. If this is interesting to you, check out the book called the ultimate guide to methylene blue by Mark Sloan. It'll blow your mind. Or you can listen to episode 731 by Adam Marifiotti from lifeblood. So check out methylene blue, add it to your stack on today's show page or in our store, biochargeme.com and the code EHR10 we'll get you a 10% discount, percent discount to the tumor, like an actual line in the x-ray, which I thought, wow, that is incredible. I mean, that goes back to what you were saying earlier. Yes. Yeah. There was a uh, um, thermography that was, was done where a woman had a, um, a breast cyst and um, there was an injection done in the mouth. And um, the guy who was doing the, um, you know, the thermography was a little, was uncomfortable looking in the direction of the woman's breast. So he was just watching on the screen and he says, uh -huh. Oh, you dripped some procaine on her chest. He, and, but the, the, the guy doing the injection, he knew that no procaine had dripped and they wished they'd been recording at that moment. Cause it, it, it like, it went from the tooth right down to the, the breast. And then the, the breast area warmed up and opened up, you know, it's like, wow. Oh my gosh. It's body is so connected, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. That's, if there was amazing. for like a, a little place to talk about, there's a couple of pieces of neural therapies like that, that people should know. One of the things that people should know is if there's any trauma, physical trauma, emotional trauma or mental trauma they have, and they develop symptoms after that neural therapy is a, uh, is a treatment for mm -hmm. it. And it's always one of the questions that I ask. It's, those are usually can be fairly straightforward and um, people need to know that it's like, you know, like the guy with the root canal, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of days, days later had the, the diarrhea, but if it, if it even had been, you know, months later, you know, that that's actually still something to think about. People often will, will get a scar or, or a trauma will hit our head. We'll, you know, be in a car accident. We won't, and other, other things will happen later. We might get treatment for it a bit, but other things are still got put in motion and neural therapy is really the, the major treatment for all of that. And if people haven't been able to get better and they've tried lots of other things, neural therapy is definitely one of the things to put into the, the plan of action because there's that's it's like, that's where it often shines. Like they've, they've tried everything is like, okay, neural therapy has these pieces. And even if it doesn't cause the symptoms to go, we know that we've actually made the person better, their, their nervous system's functioning better. And often they'll, they'll, there's something that they can find that will now work because they've been able to, to work on, say, that we call it the second level. And there's really, I think, of five different levels of, of healing, which is also a whole, whole other thing we could talk about, which is fine. Yeah, I had that on my list, but we'll have to save that for next time. Um, yeah. So we have some messages here from our Patreon members, and I'll just kind of go through them. And Great. then afterwards, I'll let our, our listeners know where they can find you. But we have a question about a torn knee, trigeminal neuralgia, concussion, digestion, uh, knee replacement, C-section surgery, 
uh, dental surgery, uh, let's see, second degree burns and gallbladder surgery. So we'll get to those in just a minute. Um, for people listening, where can they find you? Where's the best place to find you? Um, I have a website, um, Jeff Harris, nd.com i'm a naturopathic doctor and people look for md sometimes but i'm a i'm a naturopath and and i practice in kirkland washington which is um right next to seattle it's you can't even tell the difference hardly from where it is mm -hmm. just across the bridge and um on my website i have you know how to contact me where my offices um are i'm in two different places and um and the phone number and you can contact me via you know a contacts box on the email link i'm the one that sees that okay and um so that's kind of easy and you can call if you want to set an appointment you can just call the phone number and and that and the gals will actually set an appointment they do a really good job for me make me look good that's awesome that's awesome and if someone's listening we have listeners all over the world and so um if they can't get oh, yes. to you um so you know how do they find someone that does your work where they are so everybody every doctor is unique so not everybody's it's going to do this all the same things I do, but for neural therapy, um, you can actually look up. Um, there's n a a n t dot org in in North America. It's called nant dot org, and um, it's actually the North American Academy of Neural Therapy, which I really didn't plug yet. So, I, and I, oh, I'm cool. actually the I'm the current president of the North American Academy of Neural Therapy. Oh, very cool. Okay. I got it. And, okay. Um, so here you could find maybe someone in your area, possibly. You have a good chance of finding somebody in your area. And if you actually send an email to the contact list there, it ends up coming to me at, at the current time. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Okay. well. laughs> oh man, more um, work, right? <laughs> it's more work. It, it is. Yeah. You know, being the president is a, it's a lot of work. I'm president for another um, year now. Oh, wow. And, and um, we'll have a big conference um, next year, an international conference where we'll have, um, there's doctors that um, from Spain. Um, I, was, I was speaking in Bogota, Colombia um, last fall at, a, at an international conference there. They, South America has a lot of really good neural therapy. Okay. Um, Canada has a lot of good neural therapy. Mexico does. Um, and a number of places in Europe um, especially Switzerland and Germany, but also I know Spain, there's a, one of our really good international docs um, is there, David Vignes, and there's a doc in Turkey. The current president of the Organization for Europe is actually in Turkey. They'll have the next um, um, conference, world conference there, another one that'll be there. Interesting. Okay. I, I've, spoken, I've spoken in China, and I've oh, also... Wow. Uh, and I was there live and I spoke last fall in Taiwan via Zoom. So okay. we're, we're trying to get more around. Um, I, I, I hear messages that there, there's some guy, there's a guy in um, India, there's one. And then I get, a, I, I get there's a couple of people in um, Australia that I've heard about too. So Oh, great. Great. There, wow. So just type in neural therapy and maybe your area. Okay. Um, so, so that's... That's one one way to find people that that are doing um, doing the neural therapy, and um, everybody's at a little at a different level, and so um, if they if they don't know how to do it well enough, they can point you in the direction of who to go to. That's so, great. That's great. All right, so let's get on to the Patreon private messages here. This is. Um... Jenny wants to know, she got into a car accident, tore some ligaments in her knee and near her collarbone as well. And she was curious how many treatments might it take? All right, there you go, guys. Episode 762. I just got done talking with Dr. Harris off the air. And I hope you guys enjoyed that show. Really interesting stuff, I think. that um, I think really the main goal of myself here at Extreme Health Radio is to, to be a signpost to basically say, hey, look at all these alternative therapies that are out there. Look at all these alternative ways of healing, and maybe something will resonate with you. Because what I hear a lot, and I'm sure you guys do too, is oh, I've tried everything, right? I've done this. I've tried, you know, I've tried this. I've tried that. But there's literally, like I mentioned to him, the injection of methylene blue for back pain, and that's something he hasn't done before. I'm sure he's heard of it. But these are like therapies that. Uh, are out there and people are having really great success with them. 
yet the average person has no idea that they even exist. And so my message here is like, I'm a signpost. I'm, I'm here to say, Hey, look at all these therapies and maybe one of them might be able to help you. So I hope you enjoy that show with Dr. Jeff Harris. And like I mentioned before, one of our patrons I sent, or I recommended her to him. I think she had, her name's Tanya. And I think she had some shoulder pain and some hip pain. And she said that she's completely better. Like things she's been working on for, I think two to three years, tons of pain, all gone, um, which is really cool, right? I mean, there's so much pain in, in the world, people physically going through accidents or traumas of some kind. So um, that's really, really cool. And so I am thinking about figuring out a way to see Dr. Harris myself. And if I do, if you follow me on Instagram, I will, I'll post that on Instagram, but I'm going to try to see if I can figure out a way to get up and see him. Um, because I got some issues. I, I would like to revisit my torn or the torn ACL, not my torn ACL, the torn ACL that they said I had, uh, in 2008. So I'd like to maybe redo some treatments on that. And I've got a lower back injury. I, I injured myself being lazy in the gym, you know, sucks, but I was doing bent over rows with lots of weight, uh, in a position that was <laughs> highly compromised and I knew it. And so I injured myself um, with my back. I think I have a herniated disc at some, I forget the amount of uh, millimeters or whatever it is. So I'd like to see if I can get some injections from him and see, see if it works. And I have a really good feeling it will. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed this show. I want to put links to everything that we talked about as well as our sponsors and everything like that at extremehealthradio.com slash 762. And if you missed the Patreon Q&A, that was really good. Uh, we went over... Um, trigeminal neuralgia, concussions, digestion, um, Jenny, who has a torn knee from an auto accident, a C-section, uh, knee replacement, his thoughts on dental surgeries, um, and second degree burns and how to mitigate that and, um, a gallbladder surgery. So we talked a lot about that and we're considering having Jeff on the show again, to go over some other aspects of the things that he does that we didn't even talk about. So, um, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, do that because you get access to, um, to listen and to watch, um, these episodes, but also in a commercial free version with a private RSS feed. And you get to hear the uh, Q and a sessions at the end of the show with the guests. So those are all available to our Patreon members. You also get access to all the protocols that I'm creating every single month for different health conditions and exactly what I would do if I had those conditions. And typically those protocols take me about I'd say 40 to 50 hours of research to research and to create. So it's everything that I know um, about certain health conditions I will put into those protocols and give you a list of things that you could try for whatever the condition may be, whether that's high cholesterol, diabetes, um, all kinds of different issues like that, um, hypertension, um, vision issues. And so we have a ton of protocols already available on Patreon. If you guys want to join, there's three different tiers, um, five bucks a month, 15 bucks a month, and 30 bucks a month. Each tier, as it gets more expensive, gets a ton more. So you can check it out and see what works for you. Um, so make sure to join us on Patreon if you guys are interested, as well as the links to the sponsors below. And thank you guys for doing that. And thank you for going to our store and making purchases from our store. Cause that's the only way that we're able to continue this work. Um, and so I hope this has helped you. And if it has helped you and you don't want to buy any of that stuff, that's totally fine. Perhaps just leave us a review on iTunes. That would be really helpful. I realize you're super busy, but if you could just go to our thing on iTunes or whatever podcast app you listen to hit rating, give us a five star and say, great show. That's all you got to say or something really quick. Um, but I really appreciate you guys listening so much. It's been just amazing doing this show for the last 10 years. So I really appreciate you. Um, again, I'll put everything available at extremehealthradio.com slash 762. And make sure to visit Dr. Jeff's website or share this show with someone that is having, that has pain or maybe is dealing with like a scar or um, joint issues, stuff like that. Share this show with them so that they can get access to his work and they could, you know, explore some of his services because, you know, getting out of pain, that's a big deal, right? And we can start enjoying life again. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I really love you. Um, and make sure to check us on Instagram if you guys want to see what we're up to on a daily basis and all that. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. 
No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any information in this blog or to start any health program without first consulting a health professional. The content found here is for informational purposes only and is in no way intended as medical advice, as a substitute for medical counseling, or as a treatment slash cure for any disease or health condition, and nor should it be continued as such. Always work with a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your diet, prescription drug use, lifestyle, or exercise activities. This information is provided as is, and the reader slash viewer assumes all risks from the use, non-use, or misuse of this information.